Cheating is not uncommon in today's society, I had that experience myself 12 years ago. There is a certain bar from which you can already look down. In my case, my wife's adultery had a continuation as a sincere repentance, allowing me to make an attempt to move on. Without remorse, in my opinion, it's not worth even trying to waste time. My wife and I still belong to those dinosaurs when I was her first and she was my first. So per se we studied each other and went on with our lives. Though we formalized our relationship only with the birth of the child. I don't know if it is like that now or not, but it was like that for us. And I didn't just appreciate it, it was like a granite monument inside of me that all the domestic turmoil, as I thought, was shattered against. That's not to say the relationship was cloudless. There were always enough screw-ups in life, and even some really big ones, but we tried and we laughed it out. Time passed and we grew up. Thanks to both of our parents, we had a small place to live. Both of us were working. A baby girl was born. Before we got married, we lived together for three years. By that time we had started building our own house, having bought a plot of land with a barn. And building mostly with my own hands, for in a young family with finances, though I had a micro-business, it was always in a bind. Although I never lived in want or on credit, my wife by this time had quite a money job which allowed me to do construction more quickly. And here our relationship began to deteriorate rapidly. I put it down to the unfinished house, a child, lack of sleep, arrogance of the received position. So it went on for almost three years, I earned money and built a new family nest. But we slept together less and less often, she kind of put the baby to sleep and fell asleep herself. I put it down to hard work, nervous breakdowns, phases of the moon, and magnetic storms. All attempts to talk ended with nothing. It should be noted that my wife is a quiet person, we never have tantrums and scandals. She just keeps silent, it is like she was not taught to speak when she was a child. All attempts to resolve crises have always come from me, but in these three years I relaxed with it. Our relationship was already seven years old by the time we started building, and I was somewhat tired of pecking at my wife's mouth for accumulated problems and disagreements. Such a procedure took a lot of time and mental energy. In fact, I was a pregnant house that I considered family, and the family consisted of 80% of my wife, the baby was still young. Thought that my energies threatened on this family were valued by my wife as for her. How rum I was. I should add that there was almost no reason to suspect her of infidelity. She didn't stay late at work, didn't go out much. Although if I had been the way I was now, she would have been burned very quickly. But back then I had rose-colored glasses, granite innocence, a friend and family companion. And then one day when the relationship had reached the end of the stick, and realizing that talk will not work, I went and wrote her an email with questions about our relationship as a stupid test with options for answers. I got an answer and only after that we had our first conversation, as I thought heart to heart. I want to point out right away that if you think that a cornered woman will tell you the whole truth, you are deeply mistaken. From the conversation it came out that my wife was cheating on me. To say that it was a shock, it is nothing to say. Even now it hurts a lot and it has been 12 years. Pain from my chest to my heels and all the other delights. After the conversation, she saw this pain and something in her kind of cleared up. Our relationship was even restored in some way. The infidelity was presented as a one-time binge at some corporate party, though I couldn't remember such a thing. She didn't drink that much. The subject was for the clod, although I tried to reach out and understand how this was possible. But in vain. I also learned that she had already filed for divorce. It was decided to forgive and forget and live happily ever after. Took the application. With varying success and even long forgotten great sex, spring and summer passed and autumn came. Part of the summer I went on business trips for a week at a time. In the fall I noticed a new tension. And as a surprise after my daughter's birthday, I was told we had to separate. With no explanation, after which she took the baby and left the house for her mother. To say I was stunned is nothing to say. The next day I drove to my mother-in-law, as I thought, frankly talked to her, took my daughter and went to the zoo. I also invited my wife there for a talk. She came in all upset, saying that I was the only one she needed and that she was kind of stressed. I could not get anything more clear. We went home. We lived happily ever after for a week and I had to go on a business trip for a couple of weeks. 
While I was there, we were normally communicating via the internet, she missed me and was waiting for me. I noticed that I did not want to go back as soon as possible, the work became more pleasant than such a shapido at home. Arrived, bored wife, great sex, overly attentive. Frankly speaking, it was very tense and made me think. And after a week or two to me in an ICQ, was such messenger, knock some guy, like chat. I looked up his IP address, Western Europe. I learned to communicate in English, and it turned out I remember something else. So about nothing. Russia, Peter, the weather. And at the end gives me my address, which is not even on the map. Here my hair stood on end. At this point, the communication was over. I drove home in vague doubts. I put my wife up against the wall and grilled her. The interrogation went on with interruptions for several weeks, with a lot of additional lies. Along the way he checked the catch of all the browsers on his computer, intercepted her mailbox. As the play was going on, the guy kept updating me, sending me pictures, emails, texts. I should give her some credit. He did not lie to me even once, and he turned out to be 43 years old Belgian, she was 30 to 33 at that time, I am so old now. We got acquainted online when she was at home with her daughter till she had to take a new pretty good job. My daughter was about a year and a half. She had nothing to do, she was studying English. And then the teacher came along. They corresponded with each other for about half a year and set an appointment in St. Petersburg. It was 5,000 come away from us. By that time she had just got a job and I was happy for her. She told me she was going on a business trip for three days. We met, rented an apartment, had interspersed sex with sightseeing. After three days she came back home, and having been satisfied with her life, she filtered some photos, he sent me the missing ones later, and showed me the hermitage. I did not see anything, for I did not even think in this direction. I stayed with my daughter and built a house with my mother's help. Relationships slowly deteriorated further, but by and large were tolerable. I wrote it all off to a new job, lack of sleep, a child and unsettled. It's been almost a year or less. I am presented with the news that she almost accidentally, accidentally acquaintances planted tour to Europe for 10 days and kind of stupid not to take advantage of it. I expressed displeasure, said that I do not understand it, but my wife ignored and left. I was left with the baby and the construction, grateful to my mother for her help. In fact, my wife went to the same man in Belgium. She came back, right at the airport, and made a scandal that I did not meet her there. Although I waited there for three hours and the flight was late. I wish I had thought about it, not a single text message during the whole trip. It wasn't a bell anymore, it was a bell. But again, I didn't notice. The relationship catastrophically continued to deteriorate. None of my attempts to reach out to talk were successful until I wrote that ill-fated test for my wife. After that, I had a kind of frank conversation in which a lie was told. In the next six months, this lie was partially clarified, expanded. In fact, at the time of sending my malicious test for my wife to live together, preparations were being made for a divorce and taking the child abroad without my consent, preparations for the division of property. She even changed her last name to her maiden name and filed for divorce. Overseas enough fat prince at this point kind of divorced, in fact, later it turned out that his wife left him, because he got even freely liked the Belgian girl. Now I wonder what would have happened if I hadn't written that letter or the conversation wouldn't have worked out. Maybe ruined my wife's happiness with a Belgian prince, but then I would have lost my daughter forever. Losing my wife at this time would rather have been a blessing if I had known all at once. Yes it would have been hard, but it would have been logical and understandable. I think there are a lot of cases like that, but fate decided otherwise. The wife was touched by something and tried to finish her affair, albeit sluggishly. Then the prince expressed his desire to come to our city, a millionaire in western Siberia. She wrote to the consulate not to give him a visa, she dissuaded him, but eventually the prince arrived in our city just a few days before the fall. He flew in the day after his daughter's birthday, that's why my wife left at that time without any explanation but something went wrong with the wife, which is a mystery to me, to this day. As a result, my wife's parents hid the prince in their dasha until I left on a business trip. As it turned out later, my mother-in-law had been in the loop long enough to keep her own correspondence with the prince. 
He then forwarded me some of her most heartfelt texts to me, wishing me to stay on the track. One day the prince showed up at our house and almost burned my beloved. I left, the prince was pampered. The prince was taken to local attractions, theatres and picnics. My wife said she wouldn't go with him, bought him a ticket with her dough and sent him to the capital, and having calmed down, began to wait for me from the business trip. After he came out on me in an email and a conversation with his wife, I remember a month as a fog. She was giving me lie after lie. I sent my wife for tests, but they did not find anything. The active phase ended there. Well, I guess there was no other word for what started as a madhouse. Now I wonder why I didn't go to an empty apartment, even without an official divorce or separation, just to sit back and figure it out. To just figure out if I need something here or not. Skipping a little bit to say that the situation was not a childish one, and for both of us. I don't know what would have to happen to a woman to do something like that and then try to take it all back afterwards. In fact, in a couple of weeks, she lost 10 pounds. In the next six months, she lost the job that she had been striving for half her life and not because the prince had sent her intimate photos there, but because the joints on the joints actually went. I nagged her for weeks. It has been 12 years since then. We have had and are growing two more daughters, three in total. And unfortunately, my wife did not bear one child. I will write in conclusions in more detail. We bought another house in the countryside and often live there. The family is friendly, everyday problems occur, but solved. Sex with his wife was just a fairy tale, even in his youth was not. Immediately after the incident she was said a few axioms, she no longer has any rights over me in terms of my relationships with anyone, any at least reason to get pregnant or lie leads automatically to the breakdown of relations, mother-in-law no longer comes into our house, but she can sometimes communicate with her granddaughter in her territory. After seven years my mother-in-law left this world, my wife considers herself responsible for her death, the death of an unborn child, and an abortion when she and I were young, and she got pregnant. Wildly afraid of her mother, she went for an abortion, and I didn't stop her. That guilt complex, plus the cheating, dropped her self-esteem below the plinth, and I can see it starting to destroy her. And for the most part it wasn't me who instilled it in her, in some incomprehensible way she realized it all on her own. And I don't know what to do about it. That's the story, share in the comments. What do you think of the situation and the behavior of the characters? And thank you for listening to the story to the end. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Have a nice day.